Hey, I'm Hunt, and this is Hunt on LSU, your channel for LSU Fighting Tiger football talk. Enjoy the video. We want you to leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe right below the video. Enjoy. I've got an interesting story that The Athletic did. Um, and, and when I see a headline like this, I'm, I'm immediately gravitating towards it because I, I, I really don't know what the, um, the study is going to show. And so the headline from Max Olson was, which college football programs actually won the 2020 recruiting cycle, re-ranking the classes? So what he did was he went back at all of the 2020 signing classes, and he assigned each player a point rating that was signed. If they were an All-American, an award winner, or a top 50 NFL draft pick, that player got five points. If they were a multi-year starter and an all-conference player, four points. If they were a one-year starter or a key reserve, three points, career backup, two points, minor or no contribution, zero points. Now, you don't need to know all that, but you understand this is how they would look at this. You either got your All-Americans or top two-round draft picks. You've got your starters and all-conference players. You've got your reserves, and you got your folks that don't help at all. And... I was interested in this. So we'll start from the LSU perspective. This class for LSU in 2020 was coming off the 2019 National Championship. The top signees in that class, um, in terms of how they panned out, were B.J. Ojolari, Jaqueline Roy, Ali Gay, Jabril Cox, um, and Kayshawn Booty. Um, that's the class we're talking about here. And LSU ranked 10th on this list. The top of the list is the Georgia Bulldogs. Um you look at this Georgia team, that class had Jalen Carter in it. Pretty good. <laughs> First pick in the draft. Cedric Van Praan, All-American, three-year starter at center for him. Lad McConkey, probably heard of him. Carson Beck was in that class. He's going to become your two-year starting quarterback. Um, and so that's number one. Bama had Bryce Young and Will Anderson at the top of this class. Chris Bradswell, Malachi Moore, that was second in this class. And Michigan's was third. Blake Corum, Roman Wilson, one of the numbers that jumped out at me was not what school had the most All-Americans or what school won the most games. Or It's not surprising at all that Georgia, Bama, and Michigan are in the top three here or that LSU is right there at 10. All that makes a ton of sense. The attrition numbers on these classes jumped out at me. Attrition for them is defined as transferred out before you graduated, a graduate transfer, someone who is kicked out of the program, um, or elects to leave. Like, basically, anything but you finished your college football career, graduated, and left. Georgia's class, best in the country by, these point, by this point system, had a 46% attrition rate. 46% of that class did not finish at Georgia. Bama's was 62%. These are the best classes. Michigan, 61%. Now, I realize LSU had a coaching change here. But 68% attrition rate from that cl signing class of 2020. The names that jump out here, Eli Ricks, Eric Gilbert, Max Johnson, TJ Finley. I can keep going more than half the class, almost more than two-thirds of the class left. So I took it upon myself as I looked at that because that was the thing that jumped out the most at me from this piece. I was like, wonder what that used to be before we got to the transfer portal because LSU had a coaching change in the middle of this and a global pandemic, if we're being quite honest, and they lost 68%, but that wasn't an outlier. Bama was at 62. Michigan was at 62. George is almost the outlier at 46%. So I just went back and looked at 10 years ago, 15 years ago, like how much of this was going on then? And I looked at the 2011 class because that was a very, very star-studded class. You'll remember those that are of reasonable age. If you're a 17-year-old high school kid who's driving around, uh, you may not remember this, but 
the 2011 class was a big one. It had Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham and Jeremy Hill and Kenny Hilliard and Freak Johnson and Lael Collins and Trey Turner. And it was a big time Louisiana class that came in. And a lot of those guys had ties to the state and were highly profile players. And LSU won a lot of games while those guys were here. Zach Mettenberger was in the class. They were freshmen on that great team. And there were 21 high school signees in that class. And only six of them left. So you kept 15, lost six. 2012, the next year, was not a class that was star-studded as that one. I mean, it was a good signing class. Les Miles almost always had good signing classes, and we know that the 2011 season was that awesome. So you would imagine that the 2012 class would have some really good players. And so that class had Quan Alexander, Corey Thompson, Gerald Hawkins, who became your left tackle, Lamar Lewis, Fadal Alexander, Deion Jones, Dwayne Thomas, Daniil Hunter, Traven Doral, um, Jalen Mills. Like that was that class of of guys. And in that class, you had um, 21 signees and seven of them left. So you had a, you know, that's about a third of the class left. You had a 33% retention rate. Sorry, you had a 33% uh, attrition rate. So that number has doubled now for everyone. And I'm looking at LSU's 2022 class. You signed 15 high schoolers. It was Brian Kelly's first class. Seven are gone. So that's about half. And you would imagine there might be some more. 2021 class, there were 15 commitments, 13 have left. That's more than half. You are now looking at an era where more than half of your signing class every single year is going to leave. That goes for everyone, not LSU, not coaching changes, everyone. Georgia, Bama, Michigan, everybody is losing half of their signing class. And so that is why LSU has created a staff position that Sherman Wilson holds called the Director of Player Retention. And that's why Brian Kelly, in his most recent press conference, said, like, when he was talking about we're not going to buy players, said, look, the name of the game in NIL for us is retention. We are going to focus our NIL efforts not on grabbing the one-year transfer from South Alabama, the one-year transfer from Oklahoma, the one-year transfer from NC State. We're going to focus our NIL push on guys that have come in, bought into our system, believe in this place, and have earned the right to cash in. And we're going to take care of Will Campbell. And we're going to take care of Harold Perkins. And we're going to take care of Malik Neighbors and Jaden Daniels and Brian Thomas. And when you come on your recruiting visit and you see our top players, you understand there is real earning potential here, but we're not going to give it to you based on how you played against John Curtis last year. I'm not telling you that you're ineligible to have it, but this is how we're going to do it. It's, there's a finite number of funds that you have. Now, it's a big number, but it is finite. And you've got to determine how you're going to deploy that. And for LSU trying to keep these really good high school players happy in here is going to be it. And you understand that over the course of that, that when you sign 26 high schoolers, 14, 15, 17 of them are going to leave. That is, it's something I've felt I had a handle on, but just writing it out on my notebook and seeing it is a little jarring. And I, I can just hear those of you that are driving around going, this is a ruined college football. And I'm going, well, I, you know, I don't know about that. I, I kind of enjoyed Joe Burrow and Jaden Daniels coming here and playing football. I, th- I, thought, that was, I thought that was a good thing. Um, but you understand that, like, guys are going to leave. And you start looking at, like, I'll just pull up LSU's 2023 signing class. Like, that was, that was recent. That was last year. And Lance Hurd is gone. And Jalen Brown is gone. And I'm rolling through here. Ryan Yates is gone. Christian Brathwaite's gone. Kai prien has gone. I mean, I'm just, this is literally just me scrolling on the air. Jeremiah Hughes is gone. 
Michael Doherty. Like, it's, it's a lot of dudes. Logan Diggs is gone. It, it's about half. And so that's just, that is the nature of college football. And I think a lot of times we can get immersed in this bubble in LSU world and think, man, so many guys are leaving. And it, it does us some good to allow a national writer to go back and go through all this research. Like that's, that's going through a lot of dudes. Because I can tell you right now, if you ask me to go through Ole Miss's 2023 signing class, I'm going to have a hard time telling you which guys are still there and which guys aren't. Somebody's got to go do that. Um, and to do that and realize, hey, you're, you're just right there on par with all the other teams that are trying to win a national championship. Just got to try to keep the guys around who are really good. And unless you've got a system in place to try and do the best you can. And that's uh, kind of the name of their game down here in Baton Rouge. So that's a look at uh, what I thought was an interesting piece. If you want to read the whole thing, you can go to The Athletic and check it out. Just re-ranking the 2020 signing class. LSU comes in 10th at this point. Hey, thanks for watching Hunt on LSU. Before you get out of here, do us a couple of favors. Hit that like button, leave your comments below, and subscribe to the channel for all your fighting Tiger football talk. See you next time.